This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, we are back at Ayontedal, and today we're gonna do range test of this thing here. It's called a Maxus Ionic 5. And uh, it's a, uh, well, I think they call it MPV, a massive people uh, van. <laughs> and of course, I have to park this, I mean, how, how else am I supposed to park? Well, okay, I can park, of course, this direction. But then I want to, I mean, I, the driver draw it on this side, so that's how we roll. Have you ever noticed that there are no squares like this on a fossil pump? So why do we have to have parking slots like this in a, in a fast charger? Okay, uh, we're going to come back to the charging uh, session. It seems to be okay for now. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. But, all right, so here you can see it. It's, it's quite spacious. It's almost like a little van. See here, freaking huge. So that's why I expect somewhat high consumption. Remote, huh? Well, okay, yeah. So um, it's a Chinese car, as you probably guessed. It's from Saic, the same company that also makes MG. Uh, so you have to expect um, Chinese software. For example, in Chinese, Chinese, they like to show you volts and amp at least, but not uh, kilowatt. But at least we see how many kilowatt hours being charged. And then this one must be a program. It's, um, the programmer was too lazy. It's like, charge to limit max requiring without... Okay, he ran out of space. 41 mi <laughs> Okay, anyway. So, um, unfortunately, we don't have any navigation here. We then have to connect the phone to use Android Auto or... Well, actually, I'm not sure. It has CarPlay, but what about... Do you have Android Auto? Uh, okay, whatever. So, um, hmm, just wonder if I should... Uh, okay, do you see here? We have a button here for Eco. Uh, maybe I should try to use Eco mode if it works or not. Uh, some cars, they limit the speed. But then you see there is a little, uh, there's a little leaf there. So yes, we're going to use the, the leaf mode. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so let's get ready. I'm going to do the 120 kilometers per hour test first. Oh yeah, tires. We have Hakaplita R3, 215, 55, 17. And then do we have staggered? No, 215, 55, but 17 inches on this car. <laughs> <laughs> Look how small the tires are. <laughs> but I guess it's good for noise and consumption then. Right, we're on the moon now. So the asphalt is slightly damp, but uh, for the most part it's okay. And uh, I have to cruise 124 kilometers per hour to match the, the GPS speed. But look what happens now. It will slow down in the curves. And it's not even that sharp. This happens all the time. It's driving like a Toyota driver. Dude, I'm trying to do a test here and it's slowing down. What, and then if I, if I, I accelerate, then it says active speed and then, okay, it goes, but it doesn't reset. It will just keep slowing down like that. That is super annoying. And it is uh, kind of noisy, but you know, this is not nearly as noisy as the other Moxus, uh, the van version. Uh, that one I call it Max Öresus. <laughs> it was so loud. Uh, but here it's okay-ish. There, there is a little bit of wind noise, but at least uh, not very much uh, rolling noise or road noise because we have tiny uh, wheels. So that's good. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, but that, that sound is when you deactivate and activate cruise control. <laughs> you know, Chinese people, they like chimes and noises. There was a case in, in China where uh, Tesla, uh, there's a bad PR for Tesla because they claim that uh, Tesla crashed or accelerated out by itself. Uh, so Tesla had to do a mass recall, which was actually just to push out software updates <laughs> yeah i don't know who the heck was lying over there uh, and what they did was tesla added in china a feature where when you activate adaptive cruise control 
there will be a chime. You, you don't have that in Europe, but in China, they want to have, they want to ding dong you all the time. Okay, we're back at the starting point and oh look at that we're getting 72 kilowatt just wonder how long we get that speed hmm i have to measure the the charging session there eventually okay start dropping already okay so in the 120 chest we actually uh well it, it, the consumption seems high but this is still less than fat e-tron <laughs> fat e-tron being the reference in many tests nowadays wow it's been a long time since i had this mexican from circle k oh yeah look at this uh, proper meat this time rice it's it's taco salad yeah, it's a big mexican in my mouth okay hang on. what is this oh yeah guacamole holy guacamole mm, mm, mm. this is so much better than vegan burger with bacon Mm. Okay, listen. <laughs> I was like, huh, what was that sound? <laughs> Man, these Chinese cars, they just want to beep at you and ding at you all the time. Why? Why? Okay, now we're doing the slow test, 90 kilometers per hour. We have to cruise at 93 on the speed though. So immediately I noticed uh, one problem here. There's a big, big ass picture of the car there. Why? Because if you want to see other status, I have to click here. It was the instant power economy. Okay, we see uh, consumption numbers here. And there's still the same picture of the car there. I don't need to be reminded what car I drive. I want to have speed or something else instead of that car why wait now we have something different here oh why don't you show a picture of the car there also huh oh, <laughs> oh shit nine 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 okay anyway let's um let's uh, go and weigh the car okay front axle oh really oh car Wow. All right, all right. Is that fake engine sound? Sian Kung fake, right? Okay, and how is Mjolnir doing today? Well, you can check the wind socket, it's just hanging. Almost no wind. Okay, we're coming to a downhill. And then you see here, the car is not regening. Just like uh, MG, I mean, both cars are from Psych, so it will not regen, but if I disengage cruise control, suddenly it regens. <laughs> uh, wow, I haven't been around here in a good time now. So uh, consumption so far is 203 watt hour per kilometer. We have to check for a distance uh, error. But it seems to be uh, measuring uh, quite well. When it comes to the stereo, I also listened to that one. And yeah, so a uh, quick summary is that the, the sound is nice and clear in the mid tone and uh, treble, even though I feel like uh, it, it doesn't sound as natural as uh, some of the better systems but uh, the speakers just lacks bass there is no bass here okay you can put on loudness but then you get weird boomy loose bass that uh, clips and uh, and is uh, non-linear so So 
I guess if I would rank the sound system, I would say it's around uh, 4 out of 10. Look at this view. It's always beautiful you know, around Mewes in here. But what is not so beautiful is this. <laughs> um, this car does not show you state of charging percentage. So you just see the bar in the middle here. You have uh, about, I don't know, 40% left maybe. Consumption is 201 though. So that's looking pretty good for a big ass car. All right, we just turn around at Dahl. We do the full cycle and uh, the trip meter shows 180.7 kilometers and it's supposed to be 182. So this car under reports distance by 0.07%. Hmm, okay. Now we just have to drive it down to low-ish. We are almost done now. So I took a little loop over to Minnesota and back again, which was a good call because you know, earlier when we look at the trip meter here, if you take the, the distance we drove earlier plus GOM, it could seem like we could drive over 250 kilometers, but towards the end here, suddenly it seems like we can barely squeeze out 230, maybe. So what I noticed was that the, the remaining range left dropped way faster towards the end versus in the beginning. So. Uh, maybe it's not linear like many cars, like the Korean cars. So I just hope I can get back to uh, Ionity now. Oh, 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 we have low battery now. Range over low. Okay, okay, okay. I think it's time to bail out. Let's go charge. All right, whoop, 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 whoop. Low terrain. Pull up. Low terrain. Pull up. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, we're back, done with the test. So let's look at the result then. Um, yeah, the consumption wasn't too bad considering what kind of car we're dealing with here. And also it was not that hot outside today, uh, but it was also slightly damp, but I would say pretty dry. So I would still consider it dry. But, uh, well, I have some, I have a measurement of ENV 200, but that was in winter, it was minus seven degrees and it was wet outside. But yeah, the ENV 200 used more, but uh, I feel like this car is uh, pretty much on par with ENV 200, but maybe ENV 200 spends light, slightly less, I'm not sure, I guess. But again, compared to some of the other ones like ES8 or Fat e-tron, you see that um, uh, this one is even more efficient than those cars and this one is, bigger the Ionic 5 <laughs> yeah funny name but uh, this time though uh, I measured 52.1 kilowatt hour net capacity last time when I tested uh, this type of battery it was in that van the, the it was called Moxus e delivery 3 and then it was lower back then so um, I'm not sure why it could just be measurement error or yeah okay but um, Overall, though, I'm not too happy with the, the software. The, that's the main problem with this car, it's the freaking software. The hardware is okay. I mean, it's still you know, this price range, but um, software should be better. It was so many things that annoyed me with the software, but um, yeah, I guess that can be fixed, right? So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.